Hello, it's Nigel Bowden here. I uh, just wanted to put together a quick video for a recent blog post that I did. Uh, you can see on screen uh, the actual blog post. You can find it at wifi.nigel.blogspot.com. Uh, it's quite an interesting topic. I actually wrote a, uh, a Wireshark plugin recently which enables us to capture wireless frames over the air using a WLAN Pi. And this is specifically for Windows 10 users. Uh, we all know how difficult it can be to do any sort of over-the-air capture in Windows. Very hard to get any adapters we can put into monitor mode to, to do a capture. So the WLAN Pi provides a really nice solution. I'm just going to run through how we actually uh, install the plugin and use it in Wireshark. Uh, so I'm just going to start by um, setting the scene a little bit. Here we have the GitHub uh, repository where I've um, actually hosted this. I'm just going to pull up a little picture here just to give you an idea of what we're looking at here. So what we've got here is um, uh, an access point somewhere with a few clients and we actually want to capture some of those uh, client, uh, some traffic from some of those clients. In this case it'll be my home network and you can see here we've got the WLAN Pi which has been put into monitor mode um, by the uh, by the plugin and um, uh, that's actually the WLAN Pi is connected uh, to our Windows laptop. In this particular case on the diagram we're showing it connected via a USB OTG connection but the uh, WLAN Pi could be anywhere on your network as long as you've got some sort of IP connectivity to it. Uh, the idea is we uh, install Wireshark and install the plugin into Wireshark uh, and you can see we've actually got a little co configuration panel we can use to set up the connection to our WLAN Pi and then we can hit the start button and you can see lots of uh, frames being captured over the air. So that's basically what we're going to be uh, doing now in this quick demonstration. So first of all I'm going to show you how we actually install uh, the plugin. First thing I'm going to do is start by installing Wireshark. I'm just going to drag uh, another panel over here. So I'm just going to double click here and hopefully this is going to disrupt my video presentation as I do an install. One thing we need to be careful of when we're actually installing we need to snap open this little tool section here and the key piece that we need is this SSH, SSH dump um, module. So we'll just select that and we'll let Wireshark install in all the default places and hopefully this isn't going to take too long this is the uh, the dangers of doing a live demo so I'm just going to let that install and there we go that's going quite quickly now and as soon as this is finished I shall be able to just drag in the uh, the plugin uh, and get this going straight away on Wireshark it's very straightforward so there we go Wireshark is installed with the SSH dump um, module installed I won't run it yet what I will do is actually just drag across another panel uh, and this is one of our Wireshark directories you can see here uh, in program files Wireshark there's actually a directory called ext-cap where um, the plugins are installed and you can see the SSH dump plugin has been installed there so that's a native part of uh, Wireshark, this is all Wireshark so far uh, um, but what I'm actually going to do now, I've actually created this plugin which is a, a Windows batch file, you can see it here WLAN Pi dump dot bat. I actually just uh, drag that file into the extp cap directory of Wireshark and this is all detailed on the blog post uh, and you can get the, uh, the, the batch file from the um, from the GitHub site, so it's, it's very easy to get hold of. So I've actually dropped it into that directory. If we get rid of those now, and open up, open up Wireshark. If I can just find that, here we go. Fingers crossed. There we go. So Wireshark's now opening up. Uh, this is a fresh install. I've not done anything uh, special with it. Um, and you, at the bottom here, you can see uh, there are a number of interfaces we can capture from. And at the very bottom here now, we've got this new interface called WLAN Pi Remote Capture. If I actually click now on this little cog next to it, this pops up the configuration interface that is provided by the uh, by the plugin. Uh, so what we need to do is first of all select the channel that we want to capture on. In this case, I'm going to capture on channel 100, which is where my local network is, and it's using. 80 megahertz channels rather naughtily. I know we don't really agree with those generally. <laughs> I'm just going to configure up the IP address of my WLAN Pi 192.168.0. Dot, and it's just over here. I'm just going to have to check it. 6. And uh, if I go to the, we're using port 22 for the SSH connection. 
This is all done in the background by the SSH dump uh, plugin. We don't need to worry too much about this. The username and password that I would normally use to log into the WLAN Pi, because it's an SSH connection, we have to do a um, uh, authentication and also the remote interface on the WLAN Pi that we want to capture on. Uh, in this case, uh, it's WLAN 0 by default, and uh, so I can just go ahead and press start. So here we go. If I just press start now, fingers crossed. Uh, it should start capturing and there we go, Oh, I just dragged this down so you can see it's capturing lots of nice beacon frames CTS, block acts, data, all sorts of bits and pieces so this is actually capturing live now over the air from the WLAN Pi and you can see how easy that was to do um, so it literally was just dragging in one file and uh, select, uh, uh, configure the interface and away we go so I'm just going to uh, circle back now if we actually want to go back and just take a few moments to go through each of the configuration options to get back to the interface configuration that we uh, where we started and get back to that configuration icon you just have to close your current capture and so there we go I'll get back to it there so if I just click on this again so just to sort of briefly recap the four tabs channel it's fairly obvious the channel we want to capture on on the wireless uh, the WLAN Pi obviously the channel width that we want to capture uh, the server and the uh, port that we want to capture on again fairly self-explanatory uh, authentication again username and password that we uh, normally log in to the WLAN Pi with it is possible to actually set up an SSH private key if you're not too uh, keen on putting in your um, username and password but that's not something I've got set up to demo at the moment uh, but the advanced tab is uh, quite interesting to look at the um, uh, the, the interface provides you with a couple of extra options here we've got the remote capture filter so if for some reason you only want to capture a specific frame type uh, from the remote end so you just want to capture beacons for instance or management frames you can actually type in um, a um, uh, a Wireshark uh, sorry a TCP dump uh, capture filter here and uh, there's a little bit more information about that in the blog post but that's a good way of sort of limiting the number of frames that you pull back over the network you can imagine if this is in a remote location you don't want to be pulling back uh, hundreds of megabytes of data frames that's going to you know uh, have an impact on intervening um, uh, intervening uh, links. Uh, the other thing we've got as well is the frame slice so again this helps to cut down if we're actually doing remote captures so we could uh, for instance set this to 300 bytes uh, and that would quite happily capture uh, you know most of the headers and the uh, the information that we want in things like beacons but we're not going to pull back uh, huge data frames and end up with lots and lots of data which is going to saturate our link and create a huge um, a huge capture file. Uh, the last option here I just want to mention uh, is the sync WLAN Pi time field. Uh, what this is uh, useful for is when you're actually running the WLAN Pi uh, via the local USB connection between your Windows machine and the WLAN Pi over an OTG connection. Um, the WLAN Pi has got no way of knowing what the time is. It's obviously not NTP synced because it's not on your wired network and between reboots it, you know it doesn't keep account of the time and it, it literally would just fire up at the time that it last shut down at. So by enabling this when we actually fire up the capture the script actually just fires through uh, the date and time from your local Windows machine using a, a command to just sync up the uh, the WLAN Pi before you start. So you get fairly reasonably accurate timestamps on, um, uh, on your capture. Uh, when you might want to set this to disabled is if you've actually got the WLAN Pi set uh, set up somewhere on your network so it's actually plugged into an ethernet port somewhere and it's got access to NTP and it's quite happily syncing its own time then you don't really need to set that so I think that's most of the uh, the, the parameters which are available which uh, we wanted to talk through. There's one more piece uh, when you saw me open up the um, sorry I'm just having a bit of trouble here picking up another, another panel when you saw me actually start um, the plugin up there were a number of default settings uh, which were already there if for some reason you want to change those say for instance you want to change the default username and password that are used each time you use it you can go into the uh, WLAN Pi uh, dump.bat file which you which you downloaded from uh, from github and uh, I'm just showing it in a text editor here if I scroll down right at the end of all the comments and things there's a section here 
where we've got access to set a few variables. So this is where you could set your username and password, the default host that you normally go to, and uh, the remote interface if for some reason you needed to change the name, uh, and obviously the time setting, which I just previously discussed. So that's pretty much it. If you save that, um, then those uh, settings will uh, take effect next time that you use the script. I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover uh, on this video. I hope it's been useful. As I say, don't forget to get along to um, the uh, original blog post if you want any more details and go through this in a little bit more depth. And it's got links to the GitHub repository where you can get the code as well. Uh, so yeah, if you want to know any more, go to wifi-nigel.com, uh, which should uh, redirect you through to my blog, and that should give you all the information that you need. So hope you've enjoyed the video, and uh, I shall uh, catch you next time. Bye.